Hey, welcome back. There is something that I really enjoy called documentation. So documentation is so useful for when you or your project manager or whoever else is looking at your design. So in this video, I want to show you some useful documentation you can create in Altium Designer. All right, let's go ahead and make a 3D PCB. How do we do that? Go to view 3D layout mode. And then we can do something like a file export uh, PDF 3D. So we have this. And I like to put something in here that indicates what the document actually is. So 3D PDF. You can do with CAD optimize, hide internal copper if you want. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. You can also change it. Let's go with red, shall we? Export. Now, what happens if in Adobe is you have to set trust permissions, trust this document always. Then click on the question mark. Then the PCB becomes visible. Now you can move it around. It looks nice. You can see all the stuff. So you don't need Altium installed in your computer. People don't need to look. Very nice. Very, very nice. Cool. So that is how you generate a 3D PDF. That is one part of the documentation. What about other things? If we save this, yes, project output. Yeah, that's good. Sure, we could save over it. Great. What else can we do? Let's look at the view 2D layout mode. There's a PDF I generated earlier. You can always do like a file export smart PDF, and that has the documentation. I generated that already. You go through your options, do it for the entire project document. There you go. There's also a another option here. We can go to our PCB. Let's look at our project panel. So go to panels, project. I'm going to add a special type of documentation or document. So right click on the project, add new to project draftsman document. The amazing thing about Altium Designer is its drafting capability. Let's do a fabrication drawing. You can do assembly drawing. It's really nice. And then there are templates too that you can find and set up. But let's go with one of our templates, uh, assembly drawing and CB, uh, so on and so forth. You can choose which document you're doing the drawing from. You can choose which project you're doing it from. Click OK. Then the template just automatically imports the board and generates the perspectives for you, right? We've got the bottom, we've got sides of it. This is for assembly, right? There are notes we can add. You double click, you set your uh, specifications for the notes, the text for the note, instructions. We have the, uh, let's see here, we have the description revisions, right, zones, um, the title block for the drawing. All of this is customizable. And then we can add uh, call outs. So let's say we want to call out something like, I don't know, this part over here, this is call out number six, and we right click to be done with that, you know, and right click to get out of call out mode. What else can we do? We can add notes, feature control, datum, features. Um, let's see, linear dimensions. Yeah, that's important. So, okay, let's, no, 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 no. Let's get out of that linear dimension, let's say from one point to another point, and then you've got your dimension. And then from one other point to the other point, you've got that, right? So there's that, your linear dimension. There's also inserting the component view. So that's pretty cool. you know, something like that. Um, you can insert a fabrication view. This is what the fabrication looks like. Normally I would put these on completely separate 
pages. So assembly on one drawing, fabrication on the other. With fabrication, I would put like, um, for my kit fabrication drawings, I would put drill data and so on. Let's see here. I noticed that it doesn't keep perspective. Let's do a control X to see if I can paste this directly where I want it to be. There we go. That's good. Why do we bother with documentation like this? It's because the manufacturer or assembly house or both, they want to make sure that they build your board to what's specified. And that's an insurance policy, really. If they build something and you gave them no documentation, they'll say, well, actually, it wouldn't even happen. They wouldn't even um, get to the point where they're doing a build and they have no documentation. At least I imagine they wouldn't. They don't let me get away with it. But at the same time, I don't try to get away with it. And you can enter the circle area for the board detail. Let's say you want something specific to this U1 and R1. And you say, hey, we need the layout to be exactly like this. Or it'll cause problems for our thing. Then there's the bill of materials. So you can click on the bill of materials, generate that. Looks great. And then you can, you can customize this, you know, uh, make it look nice. Right. For fabrication, this is where we put our drill data. You know, you can, you have your drill table, right? Uh, transmission line table, just a table in general. If you want to add something else, you can add graphics. You can really just take a look at the menu and see all the things you can add. All of this stuff is useful. Also, diameter dimension. Now, this is about the board. Let's see. Does it show up on the fabrication output? No. I would add my dimension here, yeah? And it shows that. They, uh, the, you know, your, your mechanical guy or person or lady may want to know what, what are the hole sizes? What, what screws do we have to get to accommodate the holes in this board, you know? So. So you can click and hold and drag, and then it'll blow up that dimension there, blow up the dimension. Something really important to include is the dimension for your distance of the holds from the origin or wherever, some origin point. So you do that, you do that, and let them know how far the hole is from the origin, the distance between the mounting holes as well right how far the hole is from the top edge of the board it becomes extremely useful especially when you're designing an enclosure around the pcb that's already been made really it would be the other way around but uh at least ideally anyway but in many cases that's not how it happens now let's look at this what about this uh, title block. Well, we can add an in information. We can go click on panels, properties, and then fill in our parameters. We have PCB underscore title one. If we look for that parameter, sort by name. We can look at different things like the project name and so on and so forth. Engineer you know, Kirsch, company name, my company,
approved by, address, so on and so forth. You know, you can go in your um, settings, right? I would probably go to project here. And for the project options, I would look at my parameters, add a parameter, edit, edit certain parameters, so on and so forth to get into editing wherever these, this is pulling its data from, like PCB engineer. I'm not going to go extensive with this uh, for the parameters and everything. I'll just right click, save this document. And this would also be part of the project output. Reve, you can call this assembly fab doc save you can get pretty crazy with this like if you want you can take a screenshot of the 3d view and uh, import it into your drawing or if your mechanical persons want a an actual 3d model of this thing you can do a 3d step model 3d step models are heavy so to speak, but it's okay. You generate the 3D step model. And I click OK. Done. Right, and even if you don't want to do all that yourself, you can export it to the mechanical engineer or something like that. And then they can do something with it, like you know, they can pan around and all this stuff. There's the home view that they can go to, the bottom view, the top, and they can reorient this thing. Finally, here's something else I want to show off, which is the uh, CAD electronic design thing. So let's choose from the computer. This is our PCB document and the upload is in progress. And here we go. This is what it looks like. It's just beautiful and just looks very nice. This is what we got in the, at least this is what looks like we've got in this view here. I'm not sure if this is exactly how it's done, but we can upload the schematic document. And look at that. We can zoom in, zoom out, click on a part, look at all the information. You know, it's just really nice. Just good, solid documentation. You can share this. The link will remain active for 48 hours after creation. And because they don't want to keep storing links all over the place. But you can also embed this somewhere, right? So if I want, I can go and embed it into the script um, for the web page, put in the body, you know. You can use this to share a link of your uh, design to some with someone, and then here's your bill of material. It t automatically takes you to Octopart for the parts. It is just fantastic, and it gives you the total cost for this board, $10. Well, how much does this cost then? So $15. I'm sure they produce this at such a scale that this is just, you know, maybe this is $5 in total to produce the number of copies of this board that they want. That is the full documentation process. Uh, I understand that many people do not like documentation, but I do. And it's just great. Okay. Thank you for going through this tutorial series with me. It's been fantastic. And I hope this helps you get a better understanding or a leg up or a head start toward working in Altium Designer. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. You can email me. You can reach out. Uh, post your own videos. You're doing your own designs if you want uh, or your own links of your own designs, your own website, start a blog, things like that. Show off uh, sh uh, and, and get involved. 
Alright, thanks for watching.